Nerd Academy podcast is released weekly at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, available on our website at www.thenerdacademypodcast.com and wherever you listen to podcasts. You can find the Nerd Academy podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. You can also help support the show by going to patreon.com forward slash the Nerd Academy podcast, where every donation allows us to bring you more exciting content every week. Good morning, class, and welcome back to the Nerd Academy podcast, your source for nerddom news and commentary. I am your host and superior web headmaster, Jared Bachman Stubbs, and joining me, as always, is Professor Resident Green Lantern, Travis Grossman. Do you think the Sprite curse uh, transfers to cans? No, I think that's a bottle exclusive. You'd be correct. Excellent. And we are also joined from a distance by our resident Themyscira princess and Sokovian witch. We got Lexi Capel. Hello. I'm wearing these sunglasses for a reason. And I want you yeah. guys to tell me whether or not you can see that I am playing Fortnite. We can indeed definitely That's see it. Lit. <clears throat> Love I don't it. want to sing it now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for your sake, I hope that uh, that song is available in the Instagram stories. Uh, when like, I if I start singing it, post. will we get in trouble for it? No. no. And we could only, I mean, if we wanted to, we could play up to 10 seconds of it. I think it's I 10 like seconds. Say 10 seconds of number one victory royale. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'll yeah, do. Fortnite, we're about to get down. <laughs> I feel too. Old to be singing it. Uh, I think I think you're at the appropriate age to sing it, at least ironically. Um, I think that's fair. <clears throat> also, um, did you guys like turn up the volume of the intro mid thing? No, no, no. It like bass boosted in my ears for a second, and I was very not cozy. <laughs> I apologize for that. I usually have to when I'm calling and i have to turn it down a little bit no but it was for, fine uh, and then all of a sudden and it was like sudden, the nerd academy podcast and i was like that's weird oh. it was joel it was joel like it wasn't the audio track of joel it was like joel in real time yeah. hacking in to just <clears throat> scream it no no no. see the intros were actually joel calling in live for a minute every <laughs> single show <laughs> Joel has been on every episode since the since overhaul was completed. You just didn't know it. Um, I like how you added Sokovian. What'd you say? Which Sokovian witch? Thank you. You're welcome. You're. I, what did you leave out though? Don't I have? I said one? the Mascarian princess. And then there was something else. The yeah, I say. I say consular on nights. Oh yeah, um, I like how you got Travis confused with Levi, <clears throat> the professor. Uh, ja. no, I normally say, I normally say resident Green Lantern Professor Travis Grossman, but I said it professor like before you were about Green Lantern. To talk to Levi, and I was like, whoa. No, Levi no, here? I, I know no, they look I, alike, but God, <laughs> I goofed <laughs> and said. Uh, Green Lantern before Professor, or said Professor before Green Lantern, and uh -huh. then started to have a brain aneurysm halfway through the sentence. Good. Um, as long as you didn't call me a Gungan Sith Lord. Yeah, <laughs> and as long as you don't pimp slap me in the tattoo. <laughs> My lock is too long. Do you want me to take them off? That is That's, a you decision. Yeah, uh, okay, Madam cool. Gucci. Oh, <laughs> now, off. yeah, now she's gonna. <laughs> But here's the thing. Now that they're off, you're going to win, and no one's going to believe you. Looks like I have to keep... You know, you know why she's going to win? Because <coughs> she has a dossier. <laughs> she dosy -si does around those inferior players. Yes. With my poison ivy <laughs> skin. Yeah, and anytime she loses, she goes like full Roka in the voice chat. 
Anyway, this is a number one contender. Uh, we're done with the Schmodown jokes, and we are going to jump into our first bit of news here, which is that we finally got our first look at Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Uh, I don't know. I know we talked about it off air. I don't know if we discussed the action figure leaks on air. We did not, but you definitely sent them to me. So, yeah, we got it like an accidental first look because of some merchandise leaks for Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Um, the costumes look cool in the action figure art, and they look even cooler in practice. Uh, Shang-Chi looks cool as shit. Like, I just love everything that we're seeing here. Um, we're looking at the Entertainment Weekly exclusive uh, that has some stills. Uh, we got Shang-Chi. We got Aquafina in some of these. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, um, this is one of those movies that like, this is kind of the first time, at least for me, since Guardians of the Galaxy, where I've gone into a Marvel movie with like next to zero source material knowledge. Yeah. Where I'm able to go, okay, I see where this is going. I recognize this. I recognize that. I think they're going for this. Where like, I'm completely in the dark here and I'm kind of in love with it. This is the first time I've like not had like something in the back of my mind to like guide me through a trailer or something like that. Yeah. I, and cause it's a Marvel trailer, right? Yeah. It's it just enough. Exactly. It's, yeah. I feel like they gave a little more this time than normal because they needed to sell people on the plot. Yeah. Right. <laughs> cause now like we have the idea of he was raised to lead the 10 rings and he doesn't want to, and now he's going to fight them instead. And cool. I like that a lot. I, I, I like that premise on its own. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. And now that we have that premise, they don't need to give us any more, right? Like exactly. They just need to show us cool action shots. And that's the other thing is that like most of our like weirder characters that are a bit of a tougher sell either got introduced in somebody else's movie. Yeah. Or they were immediately featured in someone else's movie to help sell them. Mm hmm. Like yeah, like that. Um, oh, what's his name? Uh, Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> I was more referring to Black Panther. Uh, in Civil War, uh, and you know, for people who didn't see Doctor Strange but were already invested in the Thor stuff, mm -hmm. you know, like okay, well, I'm gonna go see Thor three. Oh, cool. Here's this Doctor Strange guy. Well, now I'm gonna go back and watch Doctor Strange. This is the first time again in a hot minute where one of these tougher cell characters. We are missing a story, actually. What's up? Doctor Strange wrapped. Yeah, you're right. That was another one I forgot to mention here. Um, thank you for bringing that up. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness uh, either has wrapped or is wrapping this week. I've been seeing those I, two phrases used kind of weirdly interchangeably, and I'm not sure which it is. But I saw way. last week it was uh, wrapping this week. So I assume by now that means they're done. I think you're right, but I also like the verbiage was so weird I couldn't tell. And we've seen no set photos. We've seen not a goddamn set <laughs> photo, including of uh Miss Lexi. Um Lexi, where are our set photos? Tell us what's happening in Doctor Strange. Let us see the script. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Can I just that. say something I'm really quick? That. <laughs> sure. I almost swore. Shut the hell up. Anyway, not that hell is not a swear word, but I almost said, I don't know if you heard me. But anyway, um, <laughs> just real quick. Sorry, I'm a little bit crackhead right now. Um, I had a really weird Avengers dream. Oh, good. We're talking about this on air. And I, I mentioned it to Jared. No, I'm not giving details. It was just oh, really weird. Shame. Like I was helping them somehow, but I was also Scarlet Witch, but also Scarlet Witch was there, so it was almost as if like What if you were like a femme Wiccan? You know, that could have been it. That's a possibility. But they were in Latrobe for some reason. I was like, why are you guys here? Like why? <laughs> like this is this makes no sense. See and, with the uh, Avengers and it, th they were here for the after school heroin special. <laughs> Oh, 
And <laughs> <laughs> so first oh. thing I'm doing if the Avengers are in Latrobe is I'm asking Steve to borrow the shield so I can go commit an act of vandalism well, at the he Trobe was house. There. He was in my dream. Loki was in my dream. Um a couple others, but I can't quite remember. And I think you guys were there too somewhere. Like you were waiting at my house. Like both of you and I think Joel. <laughs> I don't, it was very strange. I don't know, I don't know why. And they, I was like stuck at some gas station and I was trying to get somewhere and I had to like get my mom to come and pick me up. <laughs> I just love really the strange. image of like you, me, and Joel like hanging out with the cats while she's getting deputized and recruited as an Avenger and a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. It's like, I don't even have superpowers. Why am I here? Like, why do you need me? See, in my um, head, I pictured, because you said you were Scarlet Witch in the dream. So I imagine you had the powers, and then you got stuck at a gas station. But you were like, well, I can't fly home. Hey, Mom. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know what the problem was. But we were at some weird gas station. I was also aboard a school bus and then got off of it and got like was afraid I was going to get in trouble for getting off of it. But I had to get off of it because I had to help them because Loki was after them for some reason. I don't know if this is in the the Loki show. Then uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna they call gave hacks. You the wrong script. Yeah, they gave you the wrong. <laughs> I call hacks. <laughs> <laughs> Back to sorry Shang Chi. Being, I'm sorry I derailed it, but I just wanted to tell you guys. <laughs> I'm glad you. I'm glad everybody I gets to know. The about viewers it. would want to know. I they think do. they did. I'm glad that they know now. Um, but yeah, I'm very much enjoying the just the, the aesthetic the here. <laughs> <laughs> Was Shang Chi in your dream? No. Ah. Um, Unfortunately. The Death Dealer, like the guy in the blue with like the white mask, mm -hmm. that just looks way cooler in motion than I thought it would. Everything about this movie looks way cooler in motion than I thought it would, honestly. <laughs> like, because I, not that I wasn't, because like it's Marvel content, but exactly. like, so it's on that level. I'm trying to think of another thing that I feel the same way about. Um, I guess Loki, where I'm like, I'm not excited for this. But at the same time, I know it will at least be good. Like, I'm not worried about it being bad. Uh -huh. I, was, I was the same way about WandaVision. Like, I wasn't excited for WandaVision. I just knew it would be good. Yeah. And that's how I was about this. And then after the trailer, I'm like, <gasps> it's going to be a good movie. That's, that's kind of where I'm at, too. You know, like there's just one of the nice things, and it's been a minute since we've gotten, I mean, not really, because we've had this the whole time, but this feels like the first time it's new again, where we have the, um, it's a, it's a blank movie, but it just happens <gasps> to star a superhero. Yeah. I and like, mean. we're back, we're like. One division kind of is like the first like newer one, but that one's just so weird and new unique that like I've said before, I think it's hard to put one division inside the mold, the mold of anything else in the MCU. Mm -hmm. Right. Lexi, do you have something to say? I'm winning. Oh, I had a feeling that was the case. That's Hell why I didn't yeah. want to like break up her flow. Um, I thought she was trying to like interject and I was like, Oh, what do you have yeah. to say? <laughs> Kick their ass. Yeah, fuck them up. Um, you were distracting me. I lost. Anyway, <laughs> I uh, he got me with a bow and arrow. Ooh, Hawkeye. Um, I think that there's like, cause like, well, one division's weird, but like, you know, Ant Man and the Wasp. It's a heist movie, but starring a superhero, and Falcon and the Winter Soldier. It's a political thriller starring a superhero. I like that we're getting it's a martial arts movie starring a superhero that like I like that formula that the MCU has. And this is so exciting to me. I love the aesthetics of it. Um, you know, here's hoping we get like an actual factual Mandarin. It looks like mm -hmm. we are, you know, it looks like there's a guy in green robes 
Maybe we get Fig I, Fang Foom. Let's I, go all the way in. <laughs> I think the world is ready for actual factual Mandarin. Yeah. I don't remember who made Post this. the death of Tony Stark. <laughs> yeah. I Was it Cosmonaut? That's like very uh, forward about like he likes the change in Iron Man 3. He is, and okay. I don't disagree with I, him. No, yeah. I do agree with him. I don't. I think if they had actually put the man, like magical the Mandarin in Iron Man three, it would have been really weird. But I think the world is ready now for a Mandarin. But he should just be a large orange. Ah, you! Ah, I'm just gonna leave this stream because <laughs> nothing's going my way today, at all. Feeling my jokes. You stole my name about the shield. I lost this game. Ugh. I'm sad. Hey, listen. I'll go. I'll get payback on. I'll get payback on Travis for you <laughs> by just reading a hilarious headline that'll piss him off. You ready? Cool. Yeah, I'm ready. As of today, the Flash movie has begun principal photography. I yearn well, to walk into the ocean. Now I'm pissed off more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I here, Here's the thing. Your theory about it never making it to theaters could still happen. That's true. This could be like a Justice League mortal situation where they're like a week into shooting and they pull the fucking plug. Yeah, but I feel like it's not... Like, I... I thought it would die in pre-production was my <laughs> best guess. What we didn't realize is that by the time we're talking shit during the Snyder cut, it's moments away from production. Yeah. Good. I mean, Great. with a skeleton of like 18 different screenplays, five different directors visions have already touched this. I'm sure it'll be fine. Oh, had to write out cyborg completely yeah. probably added supergirl to replace cyborg we have two batmans what could go wrong with the director of the two it movies what if it's just the flashes and clown makeup the whole time you know at this point i'm expecting it to be something like the new space jam which I don't know if either of you have seen the trailer for it. They came out a couple weeks ago. I have not. It's So they're no longer in outer space playing aliens. They're basically trapped inside of HBO Max, and it's like Ready Player One. And there's a scene where like, you see a bunch of people who are either going to try to play basketball who, or are watching the game. And it's, bunch, it's a bunch of WB-owned characters. Like the Joker's there. Pennywise is there. The freaking burning droogs are there. Because, you know, family fun for everyone. Uh, let's throw Clockwork Orange into Space Jam for some reason. I have a lot of mixed opinions about it, and I hate that this is the second time that WB has thrown this like nostalgia trip Hail Mary with like, we're just going to throw a bunch of shit. The Iron Giants there. like I saw I, a picture of it. <clears throat> I don't like it. I don't like it. I so don't. hopefully this, this is just what the Flash is. The Iron Giant will show up for no reason. <laughs> Continue the pattern. Uh, other quickie story. Uh, this is per the Hollywood Reporter. Uh, this is an exclusive. Uh, Olivia Coleman in talks to star to join Samuel L. Jackson in Marvel's Secret Invasion, uh, which we will have more to talk about later. Uh, thanks to Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Oscar nominee Olivia Coleman is headed into the Marvel Universe. Coleman, who was nominated for the Best Supporting Actress uh, Academy Award for her role in the British, British drama The Father, is in negotiations to join Secret Invasion, uh, Marvel Studios' next series. Uh, so yeah, obviously Secret Invasion is going to be following, uh, like it said, Sam Jackson, so Nick Fury. Most likely this is going to be our first really big scroll story mm -hmm. uh, where the scrolls are actually enemies, unlike Captain Marvel, where we kind of got the bait and switch that they were the good guys. Um Obviously, this has uh, some very obvious ties to uh, Julia Louis Dreyfus's character in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, but we'll get there when we get there for Falcon and the Winter Soldier talk. 
moving along here, following up a story from last week, we have another addition to the Indiana Jones 5 cast with the one and only Mads Mikkelsen, uh, Kaecilius in Doctor Strange, and Galen Erso in Star Wars Rogue One. Rogue One, a Star Wars story, I should say. Uh, also Hannibal on Hannibal. Uh, but yeah, he's joining Indiana Jones 5. A lot of people are speculating he's going to be the villain. I sure hope so. <laughs> he's just so fun to watch on screen, and he plays a damn good baddie. So fingers crossed for that. I've only <laughs> ever seen Kingdom of the Crystal Skull in its entirety. Really? That's the only indie movie you've seen? In its entirety. I've, I've seen not Clips seen the any of them. Can this you, summer, we are fixing that for both of you. Can you guess where I watched it? On a bus? Absolutely. Uh huh. We had is. all four of them. We had all four of them on this bus, and we were like, okay, we have enough time to watch one of them on the rest of this trip. And for some godforsaken reason, they chose Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. <laughs> okay, so like, if you have a bus full of people who have all seen the Indiana Jones movies, you go Last Crusade. If it's a mix of like have seen them, haven't seen them, you put on Raiders. Temple of Doom, unless you're super into Indiana Jones, I don't see like the general audience be like like normal people being super into Temple of Doom just because it's so cre- fun fact. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom is the reason why we have a PG 13 rating. Because it was here we go, because we're going back to high school again one more time. Because I don't understand what that meant. Didn't you do a, a project on like the ratings? I did. I did not know that Indian. I didn't know the Temple of Doom is the reason that PG thirteen exists. Um, I actually learned that in the last two years, um, watching like a video essay about Spielberg. But it was like way too scary to be under PG. But like it was not gory enough to put under R and they just had no idea what to do with it. They put it out with a PG rating. Parents lost their ever loving shit. And then they devised the PG 13. Congrats. Little anyway. fun piece of movie history there. Moving on to I think that's everything except for the big one. The fun one. The one I've been most looking forward to talking about. Uh Alfred Molina did an oopsie. <laughs> I I would argue he didn't do an oopsie. Because remember who's going to be behind the marketing for this movie. Sony <laughs> will give us the entire plot. <laughs> we will know, like, I'm worried about the box office for Spider-Man No Way Home. In part because there will be no way to do a direct streaming version, right? I mean, the Netflix deal that Sony has. But they won't do it. Netflix doesn't have a way to charge for it. I feel like they won't do it unless they can charge a rental price. Uh, yeah. And Netflix doesn't have a way to do that. And if Netflix did do that, I feel like it would be shooting themselves in the foot. Um, but also, they will show the whole plot in the trailer. And no one will have to go see it. I just want to say real quick, I'm listening to you having the article open. I'm just like being like visually and aesthetically <laughs> bombarded with how cool Dr. Octopus is to look at. I mean, aside from the weird face he's making in the variety article, um, just the, I love Doc Ock. Anyway, uh, Alfred Molina details Doc Ock's return in Spider-Man No Way Home. Quote, the tentacles do all the work. Exclusive. Uh, we are going to read directly from the interview here, uh, so buckle up. When Alfred Molina was first invited to reprise his role as the villainous Otto Octavius in Spider-Man No Way Home, the forthcoming third installment in the MCU Spider-Man films led by Tom Holland, he said he was told to keep it quiet. When we were shooting it, we were all under orders to not talk about it because it was supposed to be some great big secret, Molina said with a laugh during an interview. Uh, but you know, it's all over the internet. I actually describe myself as the worst, as the worst kept secret in Hollywood. 
Uh, instead, not only did Molina confirm his involvement in No Way Home, he happily detailed his experience making the movie and returning to the part he played uh, first played in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2 in 2004. It was wonderful, he said. It was very interesting going back after 17 years to play the same role, uh, given that in the intervening years, I, ha I now have two chins, a waddle, crow's feet, and slightly, <laughs> slightly dodgy lower back. Uh, when, the asked, when the actor asked John Watts, the director of No Way Home, how the movie would bring Otto back, uh, since, as he pointed out, I died, Molina said the director told him, in this universe, no one really dies. In Spider-Man 2, in, you know, he played Doc Ock. Uh, in their early conversation, Molina said Watts told him that the movie will pick up, uh, will pick up Doc Ock's story from, quote, that moment in the river, uh, which in a franchise that includes multiverses, time travel, and diverging timelines seems plausible enough. Uh, so, uh, also, it seems like they're going to be de aging him. So, yeah, which makes sense if they're do they're they're pulling Otto out from that moment. How do you feel about it? Be so. We know for sure. Okay, there's a couple things that need to be addressed here. One, aside from the fact that we know Tobey Maguire was spotted on set for a costume test, this is, I feel like, the confirmation that Toby's also in it. Yeah, I mean, they won't necessarily pull him from the same moment, but yeah, it may not be Toby like in this. Yeah, like Otto sinking and shit. Um, so it's a it's a confirmation of that which also lends itself to the Jamie Foxx electro confirmation also pretty much going hand in hand with Andrew coming back. So we have those two things going there. How do you feel about this being like 100% dead to rights? The same auto we saw in Spider-Man two. Uh, I'm happy about it. Like I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not having much of a reaction because that's what we all assumed, you know? Yeah. Like if he came out and said, no, 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 I'm playing a different Doc Ock and it's like we just restarted basically. I would get kind of – that would be more off-putting because that really? means all the rumors aren't necessarily true or he's lying in the interview and actually he is going to be the same Doc Ock. But – like with this, like he said, he was the worst kept secret in Hollywood for a couple of months. Yeah. So like, and he's the one everyone confirmed. Like, you know, Toby, we weren't sure about. There's that pic of Andrew Garfield, Spider-Man on the t-shirt, whatever. He's Tweets the one. from uh, Andrew's go-to stunt double. Yeah. Like he's the one that everyone knew about. So for him to go, yeah, no, this is like, this is what we're doing. Makes sense. And clearly Sony and Disney don't care because this is like he sat down for this interview that has to go through however many offices. Yeah. Somebody had to green light what was about to happen. It's still shocking that it happened like this. Um, here's what I will say. I was kind of expecting it to be like. I, I was kind of 50 50 on whether or not it would be. Toby Maguire, Sam Raimi, Spider Man one through three, Peter Parker, and Andrew Garfield, the you know, Mark Webb, Amazing Spider Man one through two. Peters and then their respective Electros and Dr. Octopus, because they even said that like Electro wasn't gonna be blue again. So I was like, okay, well maybe this is a multiversal electro type deal. Um I saw uh, Brown Table Mercutio, great video essayist. He's mean about the MCU, but I like his other stuff. Was talking about how he's a little weirded out by how this affects Ox arc in Spider Man 2. And that, like, you're pulling him from the moment where he made the decision <laughs> to sacrifice, to himself. sacrifice himself, lay, you know, lay down his arms, no pun intended to save New York and undo what he did. And that it's a little weird to kind of pluck him specifically from that moment to assumedly be one of the villains of this narrative. 
But we don't know that for sure. We don't know that for sure, but it, it comes with weird implications, and I'm curious as to how they kind of work around it. Um, before we go further down this rabbit hole, Lexi, how are you? Uh, how you how you feeling about this story? Same as Travis. <laughs> I um, I just feel like it doesn't matter at this point. So I don't know why it's like a big thing. Like since they are already done and like whatever, and everybody already knew what was going to happen. So. Yeah, I think the big thing is that it's coming from the horse's mouth now that like, and like the kind of domino effect of the amount of stuff that's like, it's still a rumor. Keep your hands up. It's still a rumor. Don't say anything's confirmed yet. But like now that he knocked that domino over that like, I just there's I really a... feel like if he wasn't allowed to, he wouldn't have. I yeah, don't think like, they... like, it's not that they told him to say it. It's just like, I think they were like, okay, well, whatever, say whatever. Yeah. yeah. Like they wouldn't have, unless they like actually tricked Sony, <laughs> which Sony isn't that smart. It's very plausible that that happened. <laughs> But, like, unless they're like, yeah, we want to talk to him about, like, if he was maybe there. Like, I don't even know why, because they don't have another reason to be interviewing him. Like, you can't approach Sony and go, we want to interview Alfred Melena for no reason at all. <laughs> yeah, don't this worry. whole interview is about Dr. Octopus. Like, don't this, worry like, about There's it. not a single other movie mentioned other than The Irishman, and that's just to, like, about the de-aging. About de-aging and other MCU movies are in here. Like, this is about Doc Ock. <laughs> so, and I think because of the lot, everyone, like, confirmed he was there. That they were like, you know what? Screw it. Just let him say it. Like, at this point, everybody knows. Let's confirm it. Let's build some hype. Because, because we have to get people into a movie theater in December. Which, who knows if those will still be around? Here's hoping. Um, so I want to I want to do a little bit of like rampant theorizing real quick because I'm I'm done with this pop filter. I'm going to throw it through a wall in a second. Here, crazy theory. Probably wrong, but that giant fusion reactor that he builds in Spider-Man 2 mm -hmm. that he's trying to destroy. What if there's some type of singularity that's connected to the fact that he created a fucking sun in the middle of New York and there might be some type of weird, like bullshit movie physics with like something collapsing onto itself and creating some type of weird multiversal singularity. Now, granted, like you don't have to science your way through it completely because Strange is going to be in the movie, so like you can very easily magic I think multiverse through. But we, I feel like there's still like a bullshit science way to do it. I think that'll be how they get him into the movie. I don't think necessarily that it'll be the Mainly cause about of it. That. Yeah, yeah, because like by then we'll have, you know, we have Wanda who wants to look through the multiverse to find her kids. Uh, we have. We know Doctor Strange's movie will be about the multiverse. We have Loki confirming that, like, there are there are some uh, oopsie whoopsies in the timeline in places because of what he did. So, like, we are primed to to see some changes in the timeline. Leave it go. Leave it go. It doesn't even <laughs> sound different. It doesn't sound different. It doesn't make any difference. <laughs> I know, but it helps with the peas. As you were saying. It won today. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think the, the more you fiddle today. with it, the more the it's worse it break. gets. Usually yeah. it's mine, and that's absolutely correct. <laughs> um but yeah, like at this point they have so many different ways yeah. to get him there that I don't think that's gonna be maybe the one of the things they have to do is stop now that like maybe that reactor also ends up coming with him if it doesn't open the hole or something. Oh, 
<laughs> oh boy. But then I feel, I don't know. I don't even, we don't know what the plot of this movie is. No, they haven't dropped the trailer yet where they told us the whole goddamn thing. <laughs> um, no, you're now. right. But say it with me now. Lexi doesn't remember what happens in any movie. So I have no idea what you're talking about right now. I don't remember. Do the, I don't remember any of the other Spider-Man movies, even though I've seen them, I think. You definitely have. I haven't seen Tasm or Tasm 2. That's right. You haven't. And I really don't have any intention on seeing that. Yeah, no. It's only like I I'm not gonna movie club you into doing that again. Um Yeah, this is real I mean, I'm really excited by all this. Uh another Sony Spider Man related story that is still very much a rumor, but it may have been confirmed by <laughs> Phil Lord, uh, who was one of the people behind into the Spider Verse. Allegedly, Avi Arad is being uh, ousted from kind of being the weird arbiter of all Spider-Man shit at Sony, which for those not in the know, Avi Arad is kind of the, how do I put it? See, I didn't like how that sounded. Avi Arad is to Spider-Man what the fandom menace pretend Kathleen Kennedy is to Star Wars. Yeah, like he does have creative authority and like makes the weirdest, dumbest decision every time. This is the man who was trying to make secret agent Aunt May starring Sally Field. Um, he was a big player in the. You know, turning Amazing Spider-Man 2 into a glorified trailer. A lot of the worst Spider-Man three was mostly him. A lot of some of the decisions that have sunk the bad Spider-Man movies have come from Avi Arad's brain. And uh, there's a good chance his hooks are either not in no way home at all, or at the very least won't play a role in post-production. Um, now that we know that no way home has wrapped. So if this is, you know, quote Ben Kissel, big, if true, <laughs> <laughs> we don't know for certain yet, but uh, if his exit is legit, um, in my opinion, it is probably a net benefit for Spider-Man. Uh, he has played a role in some of the better things that have happened. Credit where credit is due, but the consistently really bad <laughs> ideas have more often than not come from Mr. Arad. So, yeah, that is the end of our news for the week. So we're going to move right into Falcon and the Winter Soldier talk. Travis, how'd you feel about this episode, my friend? I bet you'll never guess my answer. No, I won't. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. That's what I say every time. It is. Uh, I really enjoyed a lot of things about this episode. I liked seeing uh, Bucky and Sam get to be bros. Yes. Um. Didn't really talk about last episode because we weren't here. But No, uh, you didn't. If either of you would like to discuss last week, uh, by all means, since you weren't here for it. I like that they didn't take the easy route with John Walker. Like, he's not a racist, misogynist, like, pile of absolute dog shit. Yeah. His problems and his want for supremacy are very internalized. And that's a really good point. Like he's not outwardly saying like the fuck the, up things. Yeah. The, the biggest thing is when he loses to the door Milaje. This is like the, the best example I have when he loses to them, he doesn't say, but they're women, but they're from Africa. He says they weren't even super soldiers. Plus the pointy sticks comment about the spears. Mm -hmm. So like, his he doesn't project his inferiority complex onto other people because of traits they can't control yeah you know and i feel like that makes him what do you harder. mean harder like he doesn't look at the dora milage and think that they're weak because they're women or because no, i know black. but what do you mean traits that 
Is that what you're like, talking about? Their traits yeah. or his traits? Their traits. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think you're right. Like they could have very easily like actually done Captain Maga with him. Yeah. I don't and... know. I kind of wanted a little bit of that. <laughs> not like not like totally in your face about it, but I kind of wanted him to be upset that they were women. I wanted to feel more anger towards him, but they didn't give it to me. So I that fight just on its own, I think this bears repeating might be one of the most tightly choreographed fight scenes in all of the MCU. Like between the clothesline with the spear Mm -hmm. where he gets shit whipped into the spear that's stuck in the wall. And then the little maneuver where they throw the spear through the arm loops. Like those two little moments might be some of the best fight choreography in this entire franchise. Um, um but, yeah. There was something. Oh, I also like that we're kind of seeing him go through the same arc that Steve went through. In a way, like we don't know a lot of John's backstory, but the idea that he was born to serve mm-hmm. like Steve was and that his response to getting serumed up and being chosen to be this symbol was to let it consume him where Steve instead chose to cut out the part of it that was making it toxic. Like he looked, you know, Steve's arc is that he's doing what he thinks is for the greater good. And then when he looks at what he thinks is the greater good, he realizes that it's also a problem and that the way for him to make a real change is to do it on his own. Right. That's so like he's kind of paralleled or something. Yeah. That like he's seeing the same thing, but it's this twisted dark, like I have to do what's right. And that involves, you know, giving capital punishment to the people I think deserve it versus Steve's. I have to do what's right. And that means saving people because they're in trouble. Right. Like it's those two very different interpretations of what makes a hero a hero. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I like I like the way you put that because it is very much a like, you know, not not to drag it into the gutter, but like that kind of like almost boogalooish, like war makes men great mm-hmm. type mentality where it's like, no, Steve Rogers was a great man who was forced into a war, and you're trying to forge yourself into a great man via war. Mm-hmm. And you hit that on the head very well. I would almost say that he he feels like he was forged by war. Like he he's coming to the realization that he has been a pawn yeah. for so long and that he needs to change that. But he still isn't changing the mindset of I need to kill people that deserve to be killed. Yeah. Deserve to be killed. Um but yeah, I have very much enjoyed what they've done with him. Uh, I loved the training scene with Sam, how we just kept fucking up over and over. The little bit where he almost beheads himself is funny. He's like, ooh. <laughs> um, also a little fun nugget that I, I've seen pointed out on the interwebs uh, to death, but I just need to make sure it's brought up here uh, for completion's sake. The fact that when he's running, he leaves room on the left. Mm-hmm. it's adorable i love him uh yeah no the training montage is great i what, what what's deep sigh i don't know why i joined the, this uh stream when my thunder is just gonna get stolen every time i'm sorry i have no way of Continue. knowing Continue. I have no way of knowing. Continue. Well, let um, other people speak first and then go to your but it's okay. Go ahead. Continue. Okay. No, I was I was pretty much done after the on your left thing. I think I'm done too. Okay. You're up. Well, since Travis said everything I was going to say. I don't know why I'm going to be on this show, man. But uh anyway, um obviously I thought the Uncle Sam thing was cute. 
says, look at my name, uh, with his nephew's Uncle Sam. And I was like, ha, ha, get it, Uncle Sam. This is not funny. <laughs> wow. I don't know if they did that on purpose. They probably did, but, like, I don't know. It was just kind of funny. Um, yeah, I liked it. I, it was a slow burn, and then now I'm, like, totally invested, and there's one episode left. So I feel kind of, like, not cheated, but it's just I was enjoying it, but not as much as I did with WandaVision out the gate. Um, but I, it's, like, build, build, build. Now it's there. And it's like, oh, okay, well, I guess they're going to have to, like, shove everything into the next episode. Hopefully they hit on everything that I ended up being interested in. Um, you know, I just really want to see more of Sam and Bucky. I adore it. I think it's so funny um, and wholesome and whatever. Uh, they make me, like, these shows have made me care about the side. side. I say side characters as if they're not, like, big already, but I mean, besides Cap, besides Iron Man, besides the usual suspects, that like, I care about Sam now, and I care more about Bucky, which I cared about Bucky before, but, like, Sam's Cap, now it's, like, the focus isn't on him at all. Now it's on the people who cared about him. It's, like, I like to get to see what they feel without him actually being there. You know, and how they're working together to, like, get through his passing and get over it and, like, focus on other things. Um, are we getting into the meat of the show yet or no? Is this just a, like, top baseline feeling? Yeah, yeah, just the... initial reactions from the episode. Yeah, well, I am interested and there's one episode left. See, I'm kind of in the same boat as you, though. Like, episode three, it really hits its stride with the Madripoor shit. Like, Zemo's back in play, the Madripoor stuff happens, and we're moving and we're going. And then episode four happens, and it's like, oh, holy shit, John Walker, oh my god. And then this episode happens, and you finally, like you were saying, get that buddy cop shit between Sam and Bucky. Now we have one episode left. And I know you and I were talking about this before, Alexis. Um I really think that the reason the show drags the piss out of its feet is the weird pandemic shit we talked about. Yeah, Travis and I were talking about it before you and I spoke about it. And it's like, mm -hmm. I don't know why they, I don't understand leaving it out. I don't understand it. I agree with you. <laughs> I don't I get want, it. Like, we're going I through agree it. With you Why not it. leave it? You know? Keeps it topical. I mean, you know, I... Yeah. I I think that because they had to do such weird dancing around that plot line that I feel like was probably mostly resolved by episode three, that, like, the first two, maybe two and a half episodes have a weird pacing to them. Because they're still good. Like, it's still well made. It's just not as like, again, episodes three, four, and five have just been so boom, 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 boom. Like, mm -hmm. this like really good mix of slower character moments with like, we are moving this plot along. Well, what I was saying was like, I didn't really care about the first few episodes at all. Like, that's what I'm saying by slow burn is like, I wasn't interested. And now everything's happening. And it's like, Oh, well, now I'm interested. And there's one episode. Yeah. Like, um, I think, wait, the where they were with Sharon, that was in, what is that called, Madripoor? Yeah. 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 I, I don't, like, I didn't care about it. Like, it wasn't enough in that place. Like, they just were like, hey, hi, we're here. So, and then they leave. Like, not enough happened there for me to care about that episode. That's fair. I know I was enjoying it for the Zemo shit and the intrigue, even if, you know, 
we'll talk about when we get to like the meat of the episode and predictions for the finale. Uh, Cause I will say right now, if what happens with the power broker, if what I think is going to happen with the power broker happens, I'm going to be very annoyed any, by it. I don't have any predictions. I just want to be wrong about the identity of the power broker. Then, then make me predict it. I never predict the right plot point. <laughs> Travis, say it. <laughs> Sharon is the power broker. Okay, we're good. It's Can't not going to happen now. now. It's not going to happen now. <laughs> we're safe. Um, <clears throat> I want to bring up a gripe I have. And maybe this is just me. I don't like that Steve died off screen. I really, really dislike that decision. I think that the episode should have either start. I think if Steve is like gone, gone, right? Because at first I thought the way they were talking about Steve in the past tense publicly was them covering up the fact that he's just an old man hanging out. Mm -hmm. That's well, what I thought they were doing. And then, but the <sighs> fact that Steve, that Sam and Bucky are talking about Steve in the past tense. The, I, that first moment, it should not have been at the Smithsonian. It should have actually been Steve's funeral. Like, at the very least, lay him to rest on screen. I, I really dislike that decision. Don't they mention that he died in... Uh, Far from home. Yeah. Yeah. They list him among the dead, but there's also like, I couldn't tell if they met. Like, I dead think or they're missing. still, I think they're still talking about him as like, he doesn't want to be involved anymore. He's like a hundred something year old man at this point, a 200 something year old man. Yeah. And acting like he's still in play does him a disservice. I feel like one of them says like something, something now that Steve's gone though. Yeah. But and like, that like, doesn't mean like he might just literally be in hiding, you know, and they're such high priority targets for anything that if they go to see him, you know, that's fair. I just, I, I get the vibe that they're saying that Steve in like the six months between this and end game has passed. And I feel like they're. I feel like they might be leaving themselves a window here, to operate either between he's dead and what you're saying. I think that I, they aren't. Oh, I'm getting the timeline confused in my head, because I was already under the assumption he was dead, like since end, like at Endgame, like I know he got to live the life that he. But I thought that was like weird timeline shit. I thought he got like, I don't know how to explain what I thought, but I didn't think he was, I thought he was already dead and like. <sighs> like that he, that version <sighs> of him hopped back into that timeline and then hopped back out. I maybe, I don't know how to explain it, but I, I thought that they didn't get to see him die because like it was a different timeline. I thought he went to a different timeline. I don't know why I thought, I can't remember how Endgame ended. <laughs> in, in your defense, the writers and directors also can't agree on whether or not Steve went back in time in like the main timeline to live his life with Peggy, or if he went into a different timeline with Peggy and then came back to give the shield back. Exactly. So, I don't know where, how, what... <laughs> What? I don't know. <laughs> the f the fact that the writers and directors can't agree on it is already making it more difficult than it needs to be. That's why so, I already thought he was dead and like they didn't get to see him die because they couldn't because they were in a separate timeline. Like, I, it's just another weird element of that decision, which I, I like the decision with Cap. It. I wish it was more streamlined exactly and i think that what they're doing is they're kind of like because there's this confusion with the ending of endgame with 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 steve is i think they're trying to have the best of both worlds i think they don't have a funeral at the beginning to leave plausible deniability that steve rogers still has a pulse but they talk about him in the past tense in that steve is 
retired. He's done now. He does not do the superhero bullshit anymore. He's off the board. He's off. He's out of the field of play. So I feel like they're deliberately trying to have the best of both worlds by not having a funeral, but also referring to him in the past tense. Yeah. Um, which is wise from a storytelling decision. Like, you know, you keep your options open. You never know if like, you'll be able to get Chris Evans back for like a story where you can revitalize him or you well, we, pluck yeah, we, a cap from a different timeline and where he's well, still young and shit. We covered that. He was, might have another contract with Marvel. Yeah. And that could be either them doing weird shit in Doctor Strange or um, maybe weird shit in Spider-Man. We know it's not for this show. You know, it's not for this show. He he could just be, you know, voicing something for What If. Yeah. If what mean, If gets a second season. That's true. Um, yeah, I feel we might get an answer in Loki. In that, like, they know they need to canonize a version of this. Yeah. Right? Whether it's, no, like, we saw the branches and that this, like, because Steve did this, it never closed that branch. Right? That would be a fun little change. Loki has to clean up Captain America's mess instead of the other way around from the Avengers. Well, that would be the only thing he didn't fix, right? Because everything else would be closed, like a closed loop. But, yeah. Um, fix because that was the other thing was that i was under the assumption that because he put all the stones back and then stayed it like closed up those lanes and that the whole time he has been in the background that is what i've I, I, i've thought is that steve has been present with sharon sharon peggy um <laughs> and peggy uh that like th that that's always been a consistent element. Now then you get into the issue where, and that's why I accidentally said Sharon, where the weird Sharon makeout accidentally becomes really weird Luke Leia style incest. Which is why I laughed. <laughs> um, so I would like to avoid. It's already weird that he's like getting handsy with Peggy's niece. That's already weird. Really I weird. think it becomes extra weird if we now Luke and Leia it too. And I kind of like the idea that like he went to a timeline. How I've kind of interpreted is kind of a mix of that. Or he went, you know, like every other timeline they kind of deal with is identical, but except now we're back again. I always kind of like the idea that he went back to the moment he went under ice. In an alt, pardon me, in an alternate timeline, and came to Peggy, and was like, "Hey, my your version of me is dead, ish for now, but I'm here." And while he does all the hero shit that I've already done in my actual timeline, I'm going to live my life with you here. And then eventually, I have to go back and explain what happened. I have to I've tell Bucky lost. and Sam and Bruce that, you know, I went rogue. Yeah. And even though it feels like five minutes for them, it's been 80 years for me. And that, like, he is in an alternate timeline. Because, again, that's the only way you don't make the shit with Sharon extra weird. Yeah. That's the only way you dodge that Luke Leia bullet. Is for him to then come back. And who knows? Maybe they bring him back to show his return to the main MCU timeline. For him How to just kind of again. He just lived the rest of his life as opposed to being frozen. Um, we also don't know how long that lasted either. Because there could be weird loopholes with the super soldier serum, you know, like keeping yeah. you young. Because like, granted, they've been freezing Bucky on and off. Yeah, Bucky goes in the cryo, but like Isaiah Bradley is aged yeah mm -hmm. right so i have to rewatch now because i don't remember a goddamn thing um but yeah i just wanted to address the stuff with like cap being dead or not dead and 
if they did kill him off off screen and they eventually just say the words like Steve Rogers is buried in the ground, I'm going to be annoyed by that. Um, going a little bit deeper. Kramer is the power broker. Uh, um, here we go. <laughs> He said uh, this joke to me last night on the phone, and I was like, "Watch, he's gonna say it again." On the- you got I I tweeted it, said it, and then I said it on air. I didn't uh, see is- the tweet because I am in school. I know. So I want to have the character's full name up here because it is obnoxiously long, and Val, I'm gonna forget it. Only think about it. Don't actually say it. That's yeah, I'm trying to pull up her name because I can't remember the full thing. Hold on. God damn, I'm moving the mic out of the way. Thank you for that. Okay. With the introduction of Contessa Valentina Allegra de, de La Fontaine, or just Val. Um, but just think about it. Don't say it. So with Elaine being introduced into the MCU, um, I'm sorry. I don't. How am I supposed to know? Because I said it to you last night. I think you say it. I'm sorry. Um, why? Why wouldn't I? I, told I you, don't I'm know. Not Elaine. I'm gonna make it. Up. Whatever. I forgot that you said that you were gonna make a joke. Actually, I apologize. Um, so what I was saying earlier about um, the uh, connection to Secret Invasion um, is that there is potential for her to play a very pivotal role. Um, Why? Why'd you? Here we go. I was just giving you a moment to readjust whatever you were readjusting. I didn't want you to like accidentally unmute or whatever. No, I, um, I, I'm fine. Okay. I swore um, and now I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so in Secret Invasion... Val, whom is normally a romantic interest of Nick Fury, is the first person Fury discovers is a scroll. And this is the kind of convoluted conversation I had with you on the phone, Alexis, where I don't know what direction they want to go with Val, because she's also at one point held the title of Madame Hydra. But when she was Madame Hydra, she was working under deep cover for S.H.I.E.L.D. So I don't know, but because of her interaction with Walker, it feels like she's baiting him to get up to some shit. But it feels like the only type of, you know, psychotic rage he's clearly slipping into is only going to benefit the bad guys. So I struggle to see what the end game would be for sword or a new shield to um, that was so smooth. Good. The way that moved, it was like a music video. Um, so like, I don't know if this is supposed to be like them setting her up as Madam Hydra or with secret wars or secret wars, secret invasion on the horizon if they're just going to let them do the scroll plot line or if they do both where it gets like extra convoluted. That's what's kind of racking my brain. But Lexi, you said you enjoyed Val. Don't think about it. What? I said you, you said you enjoyed her appearance. Oh yeah. I mean, she came in there like a wildfire. I don't know. I, yes, I really liked her. I like how she just came in and staked the claim. 
That's it. I also didn't notice the purple hair until you pointed it out. That confused me. I when you were saying that before, I had no idea yeah, what you were talking about, and I had to like, what? Continue. Okay. Um. Yeah. How do you think? Uh, Last night you acted like you knew what I was talking about, so that's really funny. <laughs> well, no, because I was like trying to think about it, and then I like Googled it while you were talking about it, and then I figured out what you meant with the purple hair, and I was like, oh, I didn't notice that. Um, how do you think Walker plays into the finale with the um, attack on the GRC? I'm going to be honest. I have no idea. He's going to show up and try to fight them. I think he's going to die. You think they're going to kill Walker? I don't know. Maybe. Like, is they there any up room Zemo for him? Again. Yeah, I would say at this point they're going to try to start leaving villains alive just to, like, have... I mean, they need, they need a new crossbones, Why? so... I really hope Walker doesn't die. I'm kind of indifferent, <laughs> but, like, I, I think it would. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Just that it would invalidate Sam and Bucky if they killed him. But that's, that wouldn't stop uh, Carly from killing him. Wouldn't stop Carly. You could also do, like, the raimi spider-man style like he gets himself killed that's what i was going for or maybe like purposeful himself i don't know oh that would be freaky um i'm just enjoying wyatt russell's performance so goddamn much that like in the same way i got so scared for zemo in this show like i'm that and I, we haven't addressed it yet that scene with bucky's incredible um, where Bucky spares his life, uh, you know, very much reminds Emo that he doesn't deserve that mercy. Uh, not dissimilarly to how Black Panther does in Civil War, but I, uh, Lexi, I need you to. I want you so badly to be wrong on this, but I don't think that you are about Walker biting it. I like I, th I, I think I mean, you're like, right. I don't know. Maybe not suicide, but like I think something's gonna go wrong, and he's just gonna be like letting it happen. Not like I don't know. Somehow, like maybe he'll, he'll be avenged or something, and then he'll like, like at the last second, kind of he realizes he was wrong, type thing, or like. Like he he gets himself and they can save him and he's like no 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 don't it's not worth yes. it yes yes that okay I Ho like that hoping maybe because like I was telling Jared that I want to hate him but as somebody like who knows about PTSD and like all those things like I want to feel sympathy for him i want to feel pity but also at the same time it's like okay you're being kind of a dick like you, you know what i mean like i was yeah. on board with what spencer was saying last like a couple episodes ago where he was like <sighs> like you wanna you don't like him but also he he's trying he was trying to mean well and it's like he's very misunderstood, but he's misunderstanding himself. Thing. Yeah. I want to feel bad for him, but he's refusing to acknowledge his faults, I guess. Or he's too proud to say them. Type yeah. Deal. Well, I think that kind of goes back to what you were saying earlier, too, Travis, with the whole like he's just now accepting that he's been a pawn this whole time. So like mm -hmm. to accept to to accept his faults is to also acknowledge that he is 
he has not had the autonomy he thinks he's had is that there's a whole lot of other forces and systems around him that have forced him into a situation that has made him a vicious killing machine. Um, ah, see, I like where you guys are going with the whole, like he just kind of takes the knee and lets what happened happen. Um, I was thinking something more along the lines of kind of like, like I said, with like the Raimi villains with like something akin to the way that, you know, Eddie tries to save the symbiote in Spider-Man three or the goblin or green goblin, like accidentally killing himself with the glider, like that kind of like, he's just so in the heat of the moment. He doesn't realize he's about to die. He, yeah. Like something like, you know, using the, the hobby lobby shield, like, you know, throws it without the precision that it requires and like takes out a beam that takes him out with it or some shit like that, that he's just so seeing red blacked out eyes, like bloodthirsty that he gets himself killed. <laughs> Just so you know, like, I don't think the P's are what you have to worry about. The S's are like. <laughs> don't bring up. All right. So fun little bit of background. Alexis pointed out to me that apparently I have a lisp that I was never aware oh, of my but entire life. That's not life. what I was trying to say. It's just oh. they're very harsh and loud. And I had bass boosted in my ears. I apologize. Now. So if the people at home have their eardrums bleeding. We're sorry, but he needs to yes. get this thing fixed. Yes, this um, pop filter is a Nazi piece of shit. That's what like I would have imagined Walker's death looking like, if that's how it shakes out here. Um, again, I, I, I don't know. I don't want him to die. I, <laughs> what if they pluck him and put him in like his own nice timeline? <laughs> <laughs> you get to be Captain America and kill all the bad guys and you get sports cards and just, candy. Just drop them in the 40s and just point them towards the Nazis. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Drop them in the 2020s and point them towards the Nazis. Yeah, you're right. I was I was gonna make a joke about January 6th, but I feel like he'd put that shield to good use in there on the other team. Um mm. He he still doesn't strike me as a MAGA type. You still don't oh, know? Not okay. I think he would be susceptible. But I will tell you what he reminds me of after the show. Okay. Um yeah, I, I'm absolutely loving this. I exactly what you were saying before, Alexis. Like, um, I did get officially won over, I think, an episode before you, because I was super into the Madripoor episode. Um, I just feel like they weren't there long enough. Like, I didn't... I don't know. I was expecting them to be in Madripoor a lot longer, though, too. Like, because of how heavily they marketed Madripoor in, like, the and trailers and shit. what was that random shit. scene about them, like, in the club? Like, were they even in there? They weren't even, like... What's the guy dancing for? <laughs> like... He was there for two seconds, and then it was like, okay. Um, I want more dancing. Dancing Zemo is adorable. I, I saw that. Oh, what the hell was it? It was like the four horsemen of dancing comic book characters, and it was Zemo, Baby Groot, Emo, Peter Parker, and the Joker. Ew. Um. But, you know, like the first two episodes, they're a little clunky. They, they take a long time to get where they're going. But episode three happens. We get moving with the Zemo plot line by the time of episode four. All hell's breaking loose. We get to episode five. Um, you know, we have all but the confirmation of Sam being suited up for this final episode, which I'm very excited for. I'm very excited to see him do some just straight up Captain America shit. Uh, my biggest fear going into this is that this is that the last episode would air and the ending of this show would be him having his like first flight as Captain America. <clears throat> and not that like we wouldn't get like an entire episode of him like I know red, white and blue is the flag, but blue, white and red 
<laughs> Falcon Captain America suit with the so wings France. with the shield. <laughs> yeah, he's Captain France. In the same way that if you uh, that uh, Bucky's Captain America suit, he looks more like uh, Captain Puerto Rico um, than he does Captain America. Uh, but the because his suit's more granted. Steve's suit's more blue than it is red, but regardless, the like seeing him in like the Spangly outfit with the wings, I was afraid we were going to get like a brief moment of him flying at the very end of this show. And the fact that they're teeing up the final episode, no matter how crammed it may or may not be, I'm hoping it's not too overly busy. Uh, you know, I think we all kind of got worried that WandaVision was going to be a little packed for a minute there and they kind of stuck the landing with their finale. Mm -hmm. Well, I think also that we assumed a lot of stuff was going to happen in one division that did not happen. This is fair. Right. And I've enjoyed at least the pacing of these episodes, right? Like they yeah. feel they're longer, but they don't feel like over encumbered or too long. Yeah. You know, for like, sure. These stories make sense to keep it as these hour segments without breaking them in half, like you did for one division. But we still got, I think, the same amount of television. Maybe I'd have to look at it, but I will say, like, this is one thing I've enjoyed about Falcon and the Winter Soldier more than one division. It's that, like, These episodes have had less of that, like, okay, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Please stand by. Fuck. Like, there's been less of that with this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We're like, like, I'm not dreading when the credits start rolling, like with WandaVision, where with this, it, it comes to a very, like, and that is exactly where the episode should have ended kind of thing. I don't know. Maybe that's just me, and I'm among the people who got, uh, ended up in a Wanda and Westview style relationship with the words, please stand by <laughs> by the end of that season. Um, but yeah, I'm just so excited for this final episode and you know, WandaVision, I don't know if I need a season two with the way that story wrapped up, but the very least they could do a sequel series more than a season two. This, I do want a second season of, even possible to do a season two of that because the rest of it's just going to get tied up in the other yeah movie. i don't yeah. think we're going to see any season two except for maybe what if we're not going to see any season twos of these shows uh -uh. it would just start a new series i'm curious i'm curious about the new characters i'm curious to see if that's the case with stuff like ms marvel or moon Knight. that's true that I think they might season two it. I think they no, might do like, yeah, but not these. especially yeah. because these are described as mini series events. Yeah, that's fair. That's in fair. The marketing, right? So, um, oh, I was gonna say, can we talk about last episode real quick? Was By all means, the eyes thing, Travis. Were we crazy that we saw Lamar's eyes change? No, because everyone I've talked to has said the same thing. Jared no idea what you. It. I did not really? notice it, and really? I was like very confused with you. That that one, like I was able to Google her hair. No idea what you're talking about with the eyes. Like you explained so it to me, but when he cuts himself out of the the zip tie hole, yeah, he stands up, and we rewinded this like four times to double check. And we stood He's, next to the TV. <laughs> yeah, like he stands up, and there's this glare across the screen, and he blinks, and his eyes change from black to red. I thought they were like yellowy. It was like an ambery. Like a, yeah, like a. It changed to a warm color that isn't black. You're. It's more of like a yellowy amber. I think you're right, but. It, I know I got lizard vibes. <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah. Hold on, I will. That's like the sideways blink, like that alien at the beginning of Men in Black. Yes, even though I can't remember what you're talking about. Yes, uh, pull up the show, but That's don't what like, play it up. Play it out loud. Just yeah, he's pulling up on his phone. I was gonna try to on my laptop, but I'm not sure if it'll start playing through the soundboard, yeah. um, and then the mouse will come knocking. <laughs> oh, because <laughs> he's a laugh. Well, that's and then 
<laughs> we spent this whole episode going, well, he's not dead. He can't be dead. Because they showed this thing. Is he an alien? Uh, nope. That's Is he it. a scroll? Uh, will I let this play out for a second? But no. yeah, um, I talked to my supervisor at work about the shows too, and he said the same thing. He noticed it too. So, because it looks like if you're not paying attention, it looks like it could be, um, just a screen flare. Okay, okay, okay. Watch his eyes. Oh, you know what I... He, his eyes are bloodshot, it looks like. I think that's what it is. I think he, like, turns his eyes to look this way. I don't think so. Then, wait. Hold on. That's not what it looked like before at all. No, okay, yeah. I... See, I'm just seeing, like, the weird bloodshot eyes, because it looks like he's, like, his face that's is... That's not what it looks Cause, like, though. Because... Because I will say, like, he does not look yeah. right because he's all – it's like – No. I thought there was, like, a weird gas or something in there. That's what I thought because there's, like, the drip, and I realized it was just, like, a normal faucet because I thought they were going to blow him. Like, I thought he was going to get Jason Todd treatment where they were just going to blow him to high heaven. Here, here, here. Look at his pupil. Okay. It's clear – like, that's an, that is his pupil. That is clearly a different color. I think that's uh, that looks like the side of his eye to me. But it's <sighs> Can you just send me that please? I'm getting frustrated because like I know what Hold I on. saw. Uh, it won't we're gonna, take a screenshot. We're going to do we're going to teamwork is how this works. All right. What's going to work? Teamwork. Boom. Okay. I'm sending this in the hour group chat. Cuz his eyes can't move that far because, like, then his eyes are just straight up rolling into the side of his head. I, what I think is that they, I think that that's a CGI screw up. I think that they're trying to, like, in post give him the bloodshot eyes, but the way he turns his head, that, that they messed yellow. up and made him look that looks yellow, like, almost sithy. That looks yellow. Yeah, it's definitely it's actually his eye for sure. That's so weird. Here, let me look at it again, like up close and personal. Because he like, for those of you at home, uh, pull up episode four. The world is watching, and pause at forty three thirty nine. You see what we're talking about? It like, because he blinks and his eyes clearly change. Like it's not like this. Because at first I thought it was a screen flare. I'm getting really agitated. I'm just gonna stop. Okay, okay. Hold on. Now that I'm like looking at it, like up, like as close as I am, and like, like, I, yeah, that his eyes definitely change. You're right. I don't know if that's like them screwing up, trying to make the effect for the bloodshot eyes, or if they're trying to like that's gonna come back later. But yeah, you guys are absolutely right. One hundred percent. I see what you're talking about now. You're on the money there. Um, I think that's all we have. I think that's all. Um, unless yeah, I was about to say. I was anyone, <laughs> there's anything else on either episode? I feel like there was something else we were going to talk about. Uh. Anyway, never mind. Well, no, I I alluded to it and never actually brought it up. I really, 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 really do not want Sharon to be the power broker. Like we alluded to it earlier, I think that is one of that would be one of the dumbest and laziest moves the show could make. I think like it it, it just feels so weird and out of character for me. And like, and like granted, like who knows what all has happened to Sharon over the course of the five years of the blip and all of you know, the five years of the blip. And then like the three years of everybody being on the run or locked up. 
Mm-hmm. Right. So like she has eight years to collectively to have turned into a villain, assuming she did not die when Thanos snapped. But I don't know. I just I either don't want the power broker to be revealed and for that to just kind of become like a looming threat in the MCU. Or that it's Val. I don't want it to be Sharon. I really don't. Like, you know, I'm not going to you know, start a cottage industry out of disliking that character decision <laughs> and start harassing people online over it. But uh, I just, it's not going to work for me. That's just me, though. I, uh, maybe maybe I, you guys disagree. I don't know. But I just, I really do not want that decision to be made. But it's not my story. Um, with that, any of you folks got anything else? No, Are you watching Winter good. Soldier on mine? Did I accidentally watch it on yours? Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Yeah. No, we watched it. When? Uh, like a month ago? Two months ago? Doesn't it usually go away? It says continue watching. We we probably cut in the credits before the end credits scene or something. In her defense, I watched Winter Soldier like a couple days ago, so there is a chance I accidentally picked her profile. <laughs> but I'm like 99% sure I watched it on mine. Um, no, because I fell asleep watching it, so I d- it definitely would say that it was already yeah. like it would it would say play because I fell asleep watching it, so it would have played through. Um, anyway, uh, Lexi, where can the lovely people find you, my friend? Twitter at Lexi Lion ninety eight and Instagram at Acapella ninety eight. Travis, good sir. Yeah. Uh, Twitter and Instagram at Travis Political. Uh, Twitch at Black Leader four three nine Wednesdays eight ish eight Eastern ish. Woo. Jared, he's playing Assassin's Creed, guys. Yeah. And just, it's so dumb. It's my it, favorite. It's so dumb. You explaining Assassin's Creed Deeper will never not be funny. Henry Ford gave Hitler a piece of Eden. Jared? Yes. Where? You guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at DarkJedi2552, and you can find the Nerd Academy Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and on our website, www.thenerdacademypodcast.com, where if you're feeling generous, you can donate to our Patreon page. Speaking of our patrons, thank you to our $10 alumnus, Case and Brion, the Waffle Wizard, Delta 9, and Zach and Alice. You guys help us make the content that we love to produce. Be sure to consider the $5 tier as well, where you get access to the Knights of the Nerd Republic Versus series, uh, for April, we did Executor Cedrus versus the Grand Inquisitor. For May, we're doing Mara Jade versus Galen Merrick. Uh, at some point this month, I promise Travis and I are going to review the new 52 Justice League formation. We'll make it happen eventually. We'll do it. Uh, and you'll also get the audio commentaries to Nerd Academy Movie Club. We are about to be wrapping up so bad it's good month here in a minute. Uh, we got The Room and Battlefield Earth, and we're closing it out with Cat and the Hat. Uh, and then May is going to be the original Star Wars trilogy. So you have that to look forward to as well. Be sure to click on the student store link on our website to get uh, to our T public where you can get all manner of Nerd Academy merch and goodies like the shirt I'm wearing or the pillow that Travis is sitting on or some of the stickers that are on my laptop and stuff like that. Be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, do the things. And with that, thank you very much for listening. And class dismissed.